Welcome to Yoga with Mary Carmen. My name is Mary Carmen, and today I want to teach you a little bit more about Downward Facing Dog. Downward Facing Dog is that pose that most people think of when someone says the word yoga. It seems like a very obvious pose, but it has so many components to it and tons of benefits. One of the benefits is that it can calm down the mind, the stress levels, it can calm depression. It also stretches your spine, your calves, your legs, your shoulders, so many things. So let me teach you the right way to do this pose. Let's begin. So downward facing dog typically starts from a position uh, where you're on your fours or tabletop. Okay, so knees under the hips, hands are the, under the shoulders, and this is where we begin the transition. Curling up the toes behind and shifting the hips back and start gaining some uh, weight or putting some weight on the hands to lift the knees off the ground and through the hips all the way up. So I want to stop here because this is where most people tend to be at the very beginning of a yoga journey, knees are bent, heels are off the floor, the hips are not completely up, and the hands are typically, well, here, but the head is like over here on this side of the arms. And this is okay if you're a beginner. What I would like to encourage if you're here is that you loosen up the muscles around the neck by just moving the head, okay, and pressing the base of your palms so that you can bring the chest through so you can move with intention with the breath so that you can achieve a little bit deeper stretch in here it might be a little bit difficult at the beginning let me get out of this so i can talk to you it might be a little bit difficult at the beginning especially if you've never done yoga before but with time and with more practice you're going to create more space, and you continue to go deeper into this. So let's talk about the hands. The index finger and thumb, just like that tabletop pose where the index finger is leading all the other fingers, is down on the floor, and then all the other fingers are spread wide. The weight should be in between the index finger and the thumb. That's where you want to focus on the weight so that your um, arm, this part of the arm, is internally rotated rather than externally rotated. So let's do that again. Knees under the hips, hands under the shoulders, curl up the toes, hips slightly back. I'm putting pressure on my hands and lifting the hips. Again, a lot of people are here, knees might be a little bent and that's okay. And this is where you start playing with the legs to stretch them out. So you bend one knee and bring the other heel down. It's a little bit easier this way to bring both heels down. Or if that one heel doesn't come all the way down to the floor, that is okay. Just take your time, honor your body, do whatever it is on that day. And then you notice that your back of the legs continue to stretch even more. So let's pretend that you're already very flexible or that you have warm up enough to where your heels are closer to the ground or all the way down. And you feel that stretch on the back of the leg. It continues up on your hips and through your spine. Now the head. The head is typically here for beginners. And like I said, the more you practice this, you want to imagine that you have a chain attached to your chest and then someone has been pulling it that way. So that's how you want to move into this. Another tip here is the shoulder blades. You want to create um, less gap in between the shoulder blades. That's why it's important that the weight is in between the index finger and the thumb so that the arms allow for the chest to open up and the shoulder blades meet in the back and your chest moves through. So this is a pose, like I said at the very beginning, that seems very, very simple and obvious, yet has so many different details. And the more you practice the, this pose, the better it gets. And then your hips continue to get higher. 
and your chest continues to open up more and, and, and it gets deeper and deeper and your legs also get that stretch on the back of the leg, which is wonderful. So keep practicing this pose. And then from that pose, we get so many different variations. I'm sure that if you have been going to a yoga practice or if you've been practicing yoga with me, you have seen so many variations that depart from that base. So again, thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next video.